It's the No More Black Tears podcast. It's Batizzi speaking. Yo, what's up, Mr. DJ Rose? We got a special guest again today. What up, what up? 706 Juice, man. What it do? What's going on, Vert, man? How you feeling? Feeling great. What about you, Juice, man? I'm hanging in there, man. I can't complain. Another day, another dollar. Good, man. I love to hear it, man. I love to hear it. So, Vertiz, man, what we what we got on the on the plate today? What's the breakdown? Break it down for me. We got the weekend sports. Cassidy comments on R. Kelly. TNT. And of course, what's wrong with these hoes? Okay, well, um, what, what we sipping on today? At LeBron James, Lobos. That's what's up. Shout out. So let's get started. This week in sports, Coach Huggins, after saying a gay slur a while back, well, let's give the full story. Apparently, he said when he was leaving a game, a road game, there was some plastic dicks being thrown at them. And then he went on the radio the next day and was like, that's something them um, faggots do. And after sitting down with the administration, they decided to drop his salary to $1 million a year. Any thoughts on that, Rose? Oh, yeah. Cause I, um, I was watching that. Well, I was watching, I guess, around the horn. And, and everybody was saying that he should get fired and, and all this. And But I was listening to what they were saying. West Virginia, that's his alma mater. And so he's coaching now, and he's a good coach. And he's a white man. So I'm like, hmm, I wonder if they are going to fire him. They ain't fired him yet. I said, they making a lot of noise about it. I said, I wonder if they're going to fire him. And I said, they probably not. But they'll probably just suspend him or something like that. And lo and behold, they didn't fire him. They did it. Just dropped his salary down from a million dollars. Was big deal. He got it. And I think he suspended for maybe like, maybe the first three games or something like that. So, um, I, I don't really have a problem with the word, but I understand it hurts people's feelings. But I just don't understand how that word can make somebody lose a, a million dollars. And but then the all the ARs and the radios they push the N word to everybody, and they just making millions of dollars off of that. So I don't understand it, but that ain't for me to understand here and there. But um, that's it was. It is what it is. That's what they say. It is what it is, man. man how you how you feel about it? Juice man. Yeah, he uh, lost a meal, but it is what it is. You know, everybody's so touchy feely nowadays. It's, man, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I have no idea on this one. This is this is like, this is what you got to expect. They're going to hit your pockets. If you, you do something wrong, they coming after your money. So, it is what it is. Yo, I'm with you, Rose, man. Like, um, it's crazy because I didn't even hear about the story like that. I was just strolling social media, and at the same time, I heard about a story with a broadcaster who used the N word. Yeah. And from my knowledge, he didn't get fired. He got fired. He got fired. Okay, yeah. then. Um, well, they didn't. He didn't get fired. He got suspended. Suspended indefinitely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, from my from my knowledge, he didn't get fired. Um, and I just find it crazy that. A racial slur is less offensive than a homophobic slur, um, especially since I want to know is it true that they really throw plastic dicks at them as they were walking off the court? It doesn't matter if they was throwing the plastic dicks or not. You can't call them faggots. I mean, but that's a whole different discussion. I ain't even gonna get into that. They did throw <laughs> dicks out there, bro. I ain't gonna get into the that. The dicks did fly, but it, so, it, it is it is suspect behavior though. But um. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm cool with him getting a million dollars. You know, dropped his salary, dropped a million dollars. I didn't think it was that offensive for him to lose his job. Um, speaking of people losing their jobs, though, if y'all remember in 2020, Matt Ariza, the punter for the Bills. Yeah, nobody remembers him. <laughs> but he did get drafted though, so that's why people might remember him. Yeah, six round, six round pick on the um, six round pick on a punter. <clears throat> but speaking of him, you know, you he did get cut. And released because he was accused of gang raping a woman in 2020 
and it was found out recently. That I don't think it was. It wasn't in a, like a, um, a teenager. Um, I think she might have been a minor, mm-hmm. but it was found out recently. Not only did he not rape her, apparently he was nowhere near the proximity of it when it occurred. She fabricated the whole story. And um, any thoughts on that, Juice Man? Why? Why would she do that? That that's why she was. Was she? I don't. How did she pick this dude out of everybody though? That's my thing. Like, like how she come up with the name in this person? I think she probably knew him, but I don't know exactly how the situation worked its way out. But it was just he got accused of it. He lost his job, his NFL dream, and you. But we see this happen every day. Every day. Um, and it's like, and like, sometimes the accuser gets some kind of penalties or, but most of the time they don't. And like, they took away his dream as being the, in the NFL. So they need to take something away from her, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. He need to be reimbursed whatever game checks he would, he would have gotten the last couple of years. However, on that contract he had with the Bills words. They need to honor that contract, and he does deserve an NFL trial. I will say this. We got to get back to innocent to proven guilty. We can't just be firing people and reprimanding people over accusations. We we got a judicial system for a reason because um, a man's dream was lost, even if he was just a punter. Speaking of the NFL, though, I was um, strolling on TikTok and I hit a rosé about some of the dope NFL schedule releases. Have y'all been able to check out the NFL schedule releases? Just Not just the Falcons, but just across the NFL period. Like, Are there any games you're looking forward to watching this season? Rosé? Um, not really. I'm looking forward to Atlanta losing, watching Atlanta lose all their games this season, so maybe we can get that boy out of USC. Um... But other than that, nah, football is football. Can't wait to see it. You know what I'm saying? That's a good thing about football. It doesn't really matter the matchup. It's probably most likely still going to be interesting and a good drinkable beer day. So that's how I feel about it. But I, it is surprising that um the Falcons got the the, the most least, the, I guess the least most difficult schedule. <laughs> and zero primetime games. Yeah. Well, that's good. We don't need no primetime games. Um uh, because I don't even, we nobody even knows who our quarterback is, so so we don't need no primetime games. But yeah, I I'm not really um, but I am. It is interesting now that the um that the the channels don't own the rights to the games anymore. So I guess the NFL can pick which game go on which channel now. That's dope. So so I think that's pretty cool, and that they're going to start flexing more now. With the um the primetime games and all that sort of thing, so that's smart. So that's that's gonna be good. That's interesting to see. Anything anything what you see interesting or anything you're looking forward to, Juice Man? So football, enjoy football, man. Great to see these games, man. I'm trying to see what's problem with them. I think Atlanta go to playoffs this year. I don't know what y'all talking about. Oh man, that'll be the worst thing we could do. Possible. We're going to playoffs. Probably it, it is possible because our division sucks. But ten, exactly, 10 7. We ain't number but, one. But we don't need to go to the playoffs. We need to lose as many games as possible. We're teasing. Man, I love um, NFL schedule release. It just means we're one step closer to the NFL season. Um, <clears throat> I did see the Chiefs will be facing the Eagles on Monday Night Football. I think that's going to be probably the best game of the season on Monday Night Football. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm also looking forward to Bryce Young coming to Atlanta for his first NFL game and seeing how he responds to that. But yeah. You about to get hurt. I'm, I'm looking forward to the NFL season. So check out the NFL schedule and see who your team faces and try to predict, you know, how many wins and losses you get. Um, now, for those who know Floor J, or she goes by Flo. Her rap name goes by Flo. The player, basketball player from LSU. Um, also the daughter of Camouflage. She recently had a rap song where she referenced the Twin Towers blowing up in 
And she came out and apologized. Do you think that apology was um, warranted, Rosé? I didn't think she needed to apologize. I didn't think she said nothing wrong. It was pretty, it was, yeah, I thought it was cool the, the way she spit it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't feel like she needed to apologize, but the school made her apologize and the school said they talked to her and then she came out and said something too. But um, I just think they reaching, man, because she she's talented on court and off the court. She making money, you know what I'm saying? And I think they just reaching because she's, She's she's a, a, a black woman, um, and and she's stunting. So I just think they're reaching on that one, man. So, my, but shout out to her. Shout out to Savannah. You know what I'm saying? The late great camouflage. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all I got to say about it, man. I think they're reaching, man. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, I, I I thought the apology was a bit much to make the school for the school to make her do it, especially like if you listen to rap music. I, I can name 20 songs since 9 11 that happened where that's been a reference. It's 20 years ago. It's 20 years old. So I, I don't feel like, and the way she was trying to reference it wasn't even necessarily a negative way. But um, like you said, young, black, and gifted, you know, always got to know your place. So I feel like that's what it, it more so had to do with that than anything else. Uh, and finally, on to the NBA. Almost to the final four. Any 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 thoughts on the NBA playoffs from the last two weeks? Yeah, I, I just I just got um three words. Los Angeles Lakers. That's all I got to say about it. But yeah, them boys came through. Um one and six, Lakers and six. Um I got the Lakers and six and six against Denver too, mm-hmm. again. Um they just need to stick to the script, and because this is gonna be their last time to get another chip for a long time, I think it's gonna be the last chance they have. But um, um, it's interesting that the way Denver dismolished um the Suns. Um, I wish we could have seen the Suns play Golden State, but the way they they do their brackets in the NBA is different. So, but. Hey man, I ain't got no issues with it. I'm the, the one thing that's really surprising though is the Miami Heat. I really didn't think they was going to be doing the things they doing, even though they played the Knicks in the second round. But I didn't think they was going to be making it to the Eastern Conference Finals when they barely even made it into the playoffs, especially the way Atlanta spanked them boys. But wow, a shout out to them, man. We'll be there next week. You know what I'm saying? We know we um. We we hosting the the nineties versus the two thousand um versus party, you know what I'm saying? No more black tears will be the host in that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all come check us out, you know what I'm saying? So shoot, man. That's the only thing I got about it. Very teasy. Man, um well first thing first, I just wanna say to all the people, including myself, that had doubts on Nicole Jokic, give that man the respect he deserves, man. This postseason he showed. He can be that guy. He's came out since the first game against the T-Wolves and throughout this whole season against the Suns, and he's dominated. I got to go the opposite way, man. I'm going Nuggets and six because from what I've seen from the Nuggets, they, they're, they're very impressive. I don't see Jokic being stopped. I see him continue putting the numbers he's putting up. So, you know, um, yeah. So this is probably his year to pop. This is his best season to win a championship. So he needs to take advantage of this. And then on the east side, I, I told y'all, once they beat the Bucks, I knew Miami was going to get to the East Coast Finals. Yeah, because they were playing the Knicks. Yeah, man, but I, <laughs> hey, I told people that the series against the Bucks was going to be t- hard for them. That was going to be no pushover series that, you know, Miami was going to give them give them trouble. And once they got there, I was like, oh, yeah, they're they going to they gonna beat the Knicks. I'm actually, I'm actually sad it took them six games to beat them sorry boys. You know, I hope um, Boston wins. So we can get a bubble rematch. So it can be Miami versus Boston and LA versus Denver. And, you know, for all those people who said the bubble wasn't real basketball, like, they, they, hey, they, they're showing you. They, they was they was hooping in the bubble. It didn't matter they didn't have fans. That's, that's what made it real basketball because it was just about basketball. So the best players were all healthy. And so the best players won. I mean, yes and no. It Not having fans affects the game, though. But it's that affects the 
the game as far as like mental, but as far as basketball, pure basketball, that was pure basketball. Yeah, but when you at Rutgers Park playing that, that, and that's what pure basketball is to a lot of people who played in the streets. Mm-hmm. And Rutgers, you know, be having a whole bunch of people watching the game. And fans, stuff. fans, fans make fans make the weaker players play weaker, but when it, pure basketball is, it makes practice. the weaker players weaker play weaker, mm-hmm. but it make the better players play stronger. Mm-hmm. And so it like it, it's not the same watching NBA game. Because I remember Kobe going to Denver and the crowd booing him and him hitting a three to shut them up. Mm-hmm. And I remember LeBron being down 2-3 to Boston and going to Boston It makes it Garden. more exciting. Yeah, it makes it more you know, exciting. So that, don't get it twisted now. I still think the bubble championship was real. But basketball ain't the same without fans. Because the fans, to me, out of all the sports, control the game the most with their silence and with their noise. So, but that's my personal opinion, though. I think the fans are a big part of the NBA game. Yeah, you must have played basketball a lot. Nah, but when you go to, if, you, if you've been to an NFL game, and if you've been to an NBA game, you can tell that the noise level is very different in both arenas. Yeah, fo- I think football is a little bit louder. It, yeah. it is, but because the way the stadium is set up, mm-hmm. you don't hear, the noise doesn't vibrate the same as an NBA arena does. Well, what? I've been to both, and and it wasn't um, the NBA. I've been to both, and I, I I don't I don't think I can agree with it. But, I, but I only been to the Atlanta game, so so I never oh, yeah. been to um nah, them, them teams that have rapid fan bases. Yeah, you know, like they 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 really get really really loud mm-hmm. in there, especially when players go to the free throw line. Yeah, they do, they do. You know, and that's but and that's just that's just with nerves. But when you take that's why I say it's just pure basketball because once you take all that out. It's just just pure basketball. But that's what makes it that's what makes it real basketball though is the I didn't say it was like real that, basketball that, that anxiety. No, I'm talking about just pure basketball. That's why people was able to put up the numbers that they put up. Like, because it was just pure basketball. Just, oh yeah. You it's just me and you. Cause when you go to the park, there's nobody out there, it's just but, me and you. And that's what I'm saying. That that's pure that, basketball. That's what you take away from the bubble a little bit is the fact of if you're a team that held home court home, home court advantage and you're playing on a neutral ground, you don't really get to see, like, like I'm glad to see this Nuggets-Lakers rematch because can the Lakers go to Denver and do what they did three years ago? Mm-hmm. And can Denver go to L.A. and play? Because the Lakers have been phenomenal at home. Yeah, I think they're undefeated. This and, playoffs. and the Warriors have been horrible on the road. Mm-hmm. So let's just say if that series would have been on a neutral ground, maybe that series don't end in six games. Maybe the Warriors win that series. It's Cause possible because you because every time the Lakers went home, they didn't just they they blew the Warriors out. Mm-hmm. So like that home crowd being home, all of that makes to a me difference. makes a huge difference. It does, and that and that's what really like determines like to me if you're a championship worthy or not. So I, I'm happy that we possibly are going to get a rematch from the bubble, and we're going to get to see these players still play close to the level they was at a couple years ago, and possibly see. A rematch, Miami versus uh, L.A. And it's crazy that because it was actually what three years ago when that happened. Yeah, three, it was three. Cause it was it was the twenty nineteen season, but it, all this happened in twenty twenty. Exactly. Bubble. So it's basically like three years ago. So it's like wow, this three years removed. Now we we back at it again. So I'm excited for it too. And, and you can argue pretty much all the players on the teams that was in the West End and East Coast Finals. Have gotten better for the most part. Maybe LeBron ain't ain't as the player he was three years ago, but Tatum and Brown are definitely better. Yeah. Jimmy looks better. Jokic is definitely better. Yeah. Murray, he's starting to get back to that form from the bubble. Mm-hmm. You know, but we ain't seen him do it consistently, but he's starting to get back to that form. So I ain't gonna lie, like this is the part of the NBA season that's the most exciting when we get to the championship round where it's just the four best teams left duking it out. Yeah, and the final four is almost ready. I'm just mad that the the Philly and, and Boston play tomorrow. They should be playing today. <clears throat> they get them boys an extra day off. No, I'm player. Y'all should be playing right now. Hey, the script is in. The script is in. Uh, you got anything else about the NBA playoffs, though, Rose? No, man. I'm just I'm ready to get it started. I want to see what um if 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 Lakers can win Game One in Denver. Um, hopefully they'll get enough rest. And that's been the formula for them this postseason, winning game one. So they can they can they can get game one. I want to see how 
Yoke is going to play with um somebody actually playing defense, and now he has to play defense now because the last the first two series he didn't have to play any defense on anyone, but he was giving everybody else the business. But I just want I just I just want to see what AD go step up and be be who he's been the, all the odd games this year during the playoffs. Yeah, they do need a focus Anthony Davis, and he needs to play at at a high level every single game. He can't take games off because the games he take off, they're not going to get lucky like they did sometimes this postseason. They're, they're going to lose if he takes a game off against Jokic. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the only thing. I didn't like the um the comments that Steve Kerr made talking about his team maxed out and they won the championship team and all that. All that sound like excuses, you know what I'm saying? But y'all y'all played the game. Kerr was amazing. Just that y'all got beat. Yeah, man. I mean, y'all y'all wasn't a good team, man. But hey, that's that's hindsight, man. Hey, you just gotta own up, and we lost. So you gotta accept that. I'm looking forward to Game Seven for Boston and Philly tomorrow. It's it's Tatum's chance to show that he's that guy, but it's also Embiid's chance to show that you deserve that MVP, man. Because Game Seven to go to the Eastern Conference Finals, which you've never been, your MVP season. They don't have a center that can guard you on that team, not a true center. You need to go out there with the mindset that you're dropping 50. I ain't saying you got to drop 50, but your mindset needs to be, I'm dropping 50 on their head, and I'm, I'm doing whatever I got to do to get to the East Coast Finals. So, and I'm looking at you in B, bro. I'm looking at you real hard this, um, this game. Yeah. Moving on to TNT. TNT. Got on my Boom. Um, I saw on the news the other day that a teacher confiscated a student's phone and the student pulled out pepper spray and pepper sprayed this um, teacher, not once, but twice, actually. One, one time in the classroom and the second time as they was leaving the classroom. Um, first thing first, I've seen many people get their phones taken in school and I've seen a lot of students get upset. I've never seen a student pepper spray a teacher. Yeah, that was wild. Rose, walk me through this. Man, I got tears for the teacher because man, he but he, but he was a strong man because he he didn't he didn't wind up and he didn't he didn't smack her he didn't he didn't tackle her he did, he actually just ran like a little girl. Then he's like, oh. I got pepper spray, but if it would have been, I, I ain't gonna say what I would did because I, I ain't. But man, props props to him though, cause he um he didn't he stood tall, you know what I'm saying? He took it. And he was like, no, I'm not giving you your phone back. He didn't give it back. But I just it's just crazy to me like that she had the audacity to even even think that I was okay, and then and then nobody was doing anything during the video. They were just looking at her like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so obviously, this is probably a a pattern for her, um, that she always does stuff like this. So, but this is gonna mess up her her future. Hopefully, she can get back on the right track. But her parents, I'm trying to figure out what what's going on with them because they some something need to happen. I know she she depending on how old she was, she might have got arrested, or we'll, we'll I don't know, man. But I got tears for the teacher, man. We're teasing. Yeah, I just want to say. This is why you need active parents in children's lives. Because for your child to have their phone confiscated, and for those who went to most public schools, I can't speak for those who went to private schools. You know, I, I ain't had that kind of money. Most public school teachers, before they take your phone, you get one or two warnings saying, put it up, put it up. From the article I read, the teacher gave her three warnings before he finally confiscated the phone. And even with that being said, most people who come, most teachers who confiscate a phone, you'll get the phone back at the end of the class and worst case scenario, at the end of the school day. But do we have a generation of kids that are so addicted to their phones that to be away from their phone for five minutes is punishment? Like it's 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 so bad now that most most kids would rather just get a whooping than you take their phone away for um a day. Um, the parents need to be active. They need to let their child know that that behavior is not okay. 
And I don't know how she got the pepper spray. You know, you can buy pepper spray at Walmart, so. Yeah, but I, I like, can you buy it and be, can you be a minor and buy pepper spray though? Don't you need an adult to buy pepper spray for you? Uh, it's possible, but it could it could have been just purchased for her, or she could have just stole it. That that's that's an easy easy thing, but or you know, it's because some yeah. I don't know what city they were in, so maybe her parents yeah. bought it for her the for pa- protection. The, pa- the parents need to look at that too, man. They look they need know. to look at the fact that she had pepper spray. Even if you, they bought it for protection, they need to be like, this ain't why we bought it for you though. Yes, yeah, like not. you like you misusing why we gave you this pepper spray because like for those who've been pepper sprayed before. That shit ain't no joke. Yeah, I've never been pepper sprayed, like, and, and but I've been in, a, in the vicinity of some pepper spray, and it, and I, it have it have you coughing. But I never, so I never, but I never been pepper sprayed, so I don't know the the, the immediate effects of it. But I know, I know, it, it ain't it ain't not pain. I know it's painful. So yeah. Speaking of people with violent actions, though, your favorite domestic abuser. And defensive end Greg Hardy, former player for the Carolina Panthers and the Dallas Cowboys, and UFC fighter for a short stint, what, what was going live and is now a Walmart employee. Now, pause. That is a very good job. Walmart is not a bad job. But this man went from making millions of dollars in the NFL, millions of dollars of endorsements, to now working at a Walmart. My first thought I want to give on this is, y'all need to stop fucking y'all money up. Yeah. Because there ain't no excuse. Like, like, let me just take him out of the equation. When you... Fuck your money up to the point where now you gotta work at Walmart. Now you done messed up generational wealth for your kids. If you got a wife, your wife, your mother, Mother's Day's tomorrow too, your grandparents, your siblings, your cousins, like people that probably needed you. I saw a video the other day of Marshawn Lynch. And they had an episode of Bar Rescue for those who watch that show. And he has a whole bar in Oakland, his hometown. And everybody that work at that bar is either his cousin, auntie, or uncle. When you get generational wealth, that's the kind of stuff you can do. You can employ your family to work for you, and you can make money while paying while helping them make money. But this right here, you working at Walmart after being in the NFL, now you're in a situation where the best you can do is your cousin come to you and say, hey man, can I get a discount? On, on, on something in in the store, man, that that's ridiculous. Any thoughts on that, Rose? Um, I only thoughts I got on this like shout out to him that that he he put his pride to the side and actually did it. He ch- probably trying to make a mockery of himself, make it make it seem like oh yeah. But I think in his life he should have made enough money to be able to 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 or should have made the right investments that he didn't have to. Um, go backwards like that, but man, shout out to him, man. You know what I'm saying? He he doing his thing. He, he I, I don't I don't see nothing wrong with it, man. He, he working and making an honest living. He he ain't out here getting caught with with fentanyl and pounds of weed and, and guns anymore. So look like he he turned his life around, man. Shouts out. <laughs> and for those that don't know, I had tears for him. By the way, man, I had tears. Yeah, I ain't got no tears. No tears. No tears. So, 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 TMZ was reported that in Vegas, um, before the, I, I want to say it was the Millennial Show that they had in Vegas, that uh, Chris Brown for his birthday party was in the club with Usher and Tiana Taylor. No, was a, no Usher threw a Chris Brown a birthday party at the skating ring. It was a skating ring. Okay, mm-hmm. it looked more like a club. But, um, yeah, so while they was in the skating rink, uh, Chris Brown walked over to Tiana Taylor. And, you know, you could see that he was trying to say something to her, and she wasn't really paying no mind. And he gets visibly upset. And then Usher tries to calm him down, and he gets even more upset. And the rumor is that they went to the parking lot, 
and Chris Brown, people jumped on Usher. Uh, yeah, I got tears, man. I got tears because as someone that has followed Chris Brown since he was 15, 16 years old, it just seems like every so often there's something going on with him. And Usher had, just before the incident happened, had went to Breakfast Club and Drink Champs, some other podcasts, and was talking about how they have a great relationship and that's like a little brother to him. He's his big brother. And, you know, it's just sad to kind of see them go- get into it, especially over something that was like a minuscule, probably, um, situation. Uh, and Chris Chris Brown probably is, you know, unfortunately a troubled man. But this is the first major incident, incident that we've heard about in the last couple of years. So I don't think this is vindictive of his character, though. Rose? Yeah, man, I got tears, man, because you know what this means? We probably not going to get the versus battle now. Like, they don't, they, he, I don't mess with, I ain't doing the versus with you no more. So that's the only tears I get, because we might not get the versus battle now, Chris oh, Brown the versus Or now we could get the versus battle, and now I'd be more excited. Hey, man, I don't know, man. That's all I want to see is the versus. I don't care about nothing else, man. I don't care if they got the knucking and the bucking. Um, they they should have went straight up and should have had a did like on, on, on Thriller. Or or, or <laughs> and had a um a dance dance off. That's what I feel about. It. No tears, man. Who would win a dance off between them two? Who cares? <laughs> Juice man, you good over there? Man, I'm so <laughs> so tired, man. Long day. Uh, no tears, but yeah, that will be a good fight though. <laughs> I mean, I'm not fight a dance battle, dance battle. Yeah, yeah. And our last TNT, y'all, um, uh, white female student from the University of Maryland um, got on her live and started making a whole bunch of racial comments, used the N-word several times in describing black people, as well as saying how they need to be enslaved again. And the university came off a statement saying, due to free speech, they had no authority to take away her scholarship or kick out the school. And so a petition started with the students of the university to have her removed from the school. Uh, my first thought says, when people in white America say racism don't exist, it just seems like every month I see an incident like this from a Georgia athletic trainer to an <clears throat> ex-Marine, to this student. It just seemed like something is constantly happening where it's just overtly racist. And we still have people in white America saying, oh, racism don't exist. We don't have people that's racist. Oh, man, that's 60, 70 years ago. Them people don't, you know, we don't have nobody like that no more. And then I see people that's 23 that's racist. So, I just want to know, like, where, hey, where are these people coming from there if they don't exist? They're coming from their parents' house. How they coming from the parents' house if, if racism don't exist, though? Because you have to teach that. <laughs> but but how can you teach something that don't exist? With, 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 with word of mouth. Word of mouth. <laughs> That's why they ain't teaching it. I don't know. But, yeah, it is this. It definitely is this. And it's real. But, um... I don't have no tears for her, but I have tears for all the students that she got to be in school with. Facts. But I ain't trying to give her no more. No more. I think they need the school need to do something, but I ain't trying to give her no more fame. So, man, that's all I got to say on that. You got anything else to say on the Vertizzi? Hey, man, shout out to all the students of all colors that came together to sign that petition, man. When you see something wrong... And let me just say this to the white audience real quick. That when you see something wrong and you don't say nothing, you're just as wrong as the people that are racist. So when you see something racist, you have an obligation to say something. Moving on to something that I don't even know how to describe this next segment. I'm just going to go into it, man. Hey, hey, what's wrong with these hoes? The, the rapper Suki with the good coochie had a song where in the in the lyrics go, 
he's eating my ass. Then I flip around and I eat his ass. I wish I could play the lyrics for y'all, but for obvious reasons I can't. Um, hey, Juice Man, what's wrong with these hoes? I have no idea. That's you know, I, I, like like they said. I, I think that's kind of like standard now. You do that on the first date. I'm not sure. You, you, you know, man, it's it's crazy out here. Uh, I I don't know. It's just it's wild, man. It's just wild. I, mm-hmm. We're teasing. What's wrong with him? Man, bro, let me tell you, man. So, MGH, I know he gonna hear this, and I've been saying this to him for, like, the last year. Any man that lets a woman play with his ass, I don't care if she eats it, I don't care if she fingers it, I don't, I don't give, I don't care what y'all doing. I'm just gonna keep it real, man. On the low, you get, and you don't know it. You gain, you don't even know it. Dog, Riley? I'm just gonna keep it real, like, like, like you have a gay tendency and you don't even know it, and all you need is for someone to push that little button, and those be the dudes that they maybe they woman eat their ass, maybe they woman put their finger up their ass while they fucking, <clears throat> and then two three years, those be the made man that when you come to the bar and you be like, hey, how your wife doing? You know, I'm, I got divorced. And then two years from that, you see them kissing men and they dating men and they wearing dresses. Because you was always gay, dog. You just didn't know it. Because you, you can't like having your asshole played with and not have a gay tendency about you, man. Like, that's like saying, oh, man, I want to be a vegan. But you like the smell of meat, though. All right, bro. Like, you, you really going to be a carnivore. But you don't know it, bro. You just need to be around it long enough. And some of y'all get away with it. Some of you DM dudes get away with it because y'all get lucky enough where don't no gay nigga try you. And because don't no gay dude try you, you go your whole life vibing being gay. But you was always gay, though. <laughs> and some of you gay dudes, they live in Atlanta, New York, L.A. You know, you undercover. You trying to hide it as best you can. And then you see these dudes that's looking fit and wearing booty shorts and stuff like that. And then one of these dudes say, F it. They be like, hey, man, you might be a coworker. Might be a coworker that texts you all the time and it takes you one night like, hey, bro, I be thinking about sucking your dick. And next thing you know, you like, really? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Because a real minute nigga going to respond, <laughs> hey, bro, get off my line with that. <laughs> yeah. but, 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 but you DL niggas, though, y'all going to be like, oh, that ain't too bad. Don't worry, man. I wonder what that be like. Exactly, and the next thing you know, you over here fucking a man in the ass. Hey, and you what, go from what, that to getting fucked in the what ass. What your boy Tank say? He said you ain't gay unless you do it two or three times and know you like it or not. And that's some download <laughs> shit right there. <laughs> 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 that nigga Tank said you gotta do it a few times before you know if you're gay or not. Man, bro, no. Lord help him, Jesus. Yeah, so I don't know, man. So, but. so you niggas gay, man. So, hey. Any nigga that hear this, if you get offended saying, well, my woman do this to me and I ain't gay. You nigga, you gay. Oh, man. Nigga, you gay. Stop lying to yourself, bro. Get, oh. get out the game and stop fucking up for the straight dudes who like women. Because all y'all going to do is give us, in the words of the baby, AIDS and HIV. Because y'all going to go to over there, mess with Tommy and Victor, come back mess with your woman. And while I'm over here fucking your woman while you at work, I don't know that she infected. Because you infected her, nigga. Because you gay. Yeah, man. I don't know what's wrong with these hoes, man. Because, first of all, when I heard the song, I was in shock. I was like, oh, what the word is he talking about? But I need some Rotel dip right now. I don't mind some Rotel dip. But but when she said, yeah, I'm, uh, he, he wanted to switch, and now I'm eating his butt, too. And I'm like, oh, where they do that at? I said, that's what y'all hoes like to do now? Y'all, y'all, y'all like, y'all all like a little booty on your tootie? Yeah, I don't even know, man. I don't know what's wrong with these hoes, but the main hoe in this situation, like Vert Teaser said, is the dude. Dude, use a hoe. If you like to get your booty hole played with, use a hoe. And I know y'all hoes out there going to be mad, but y'all be mad, and I ain't going to be sad. Because 
Dude, use a hoe. Use a hoe. And use a hoe. Get your booty hole played with, use a hoe. Hey, you, Rose, if you like getting your booty hole played with, you a what? Use a hoe. So that's 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 how I go. That's what's wrong with these hoes. And, and let me let me make this clear. Like we said when we talked about the transgender. Man, if you gay, that's cool, bro. Ain't nothing wrong with you being gay. But all you download brothers that want to act straight, but then come over here and then be gay and stuff like that, and y'all double dipping and stuff, and y'all infecting the pool. Like, if you want to pee in the pool, cool. But go go to the other pool and pee in that pool. Don't pee in the pool I'm in, man. Or at least let me know you like to pee in the pool. That way I could be like, you know, bro, let me get out the pool. Because I ain't trying to be stepping your urine by accident. So if, if if you that type of way, man, hey, just go and go do that over there, man. Don't 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 affect us. Don't 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 get us don't get us in the crossfire. That's all I'm saying, man. Cause I saw I saw the R. Kelly trapped in the closet. And when I saw episode 20 and one dude was end up fucking another man, and I was like, oh damn, bro, that's how that's how 20 people call AIDS. Because the because the pastor was because the pastor was fucking a, a dude with HIV. Man, that's crazy, man. And that happened every day, especially if you're from the A. Any thoughts on that, Juice, man? Or are you good? Oh, man. Um, yeah, a lot, lot comes to mind on that one. A lot comes to mind on that one. I, you can't never be too careful. You always wear protection. Always wear protection. Never go raw. Get tested regularly. You know, it's just, man. Wild out there on the streets. Streets got no love. So speaking of R. Kelly, Vertiz, man, what, what's what's the next topic? Man, <clears throat> so Cassidy, you know, the, the hit maker, he was um being interviewed, and R. Kelly name came up. And he said something that I felt for a long time. He said it's a lot of outra- fake outrage for R. Kelly because it's a lot of R. Kelly's out there. They just not rich. And it's a lot of, well, first he said, it's a lot of R. Kelly's in the industry. Half the people in the industry is like R. Kelly. And then he said, it's a lot of regular people who work nine to fives is like R. Kelly. He said, half the half of you women, when you was in high school, was getting picked up by dudes that was in their late 20s and 30s and 40s. And, those, and that was your boyfriend. And me and MGH always talks about that. But I'm going to dive into that in a second. What do you think, Rose? Yeah, man, I I seen it. And I used to hate those dudes. Like, dog, your your boyfriend in college? We in high school. Like, like we in the ninth and tenth grade. We sophomore, but your your boyfriend in college, he he whipping and everything. I just get so mad, so jealous, and I'm like, dog. But when I became a senior in high school, and all the freshmen was trying to holler at your boy. I always found out that I was disgusting. I never even, I was like, no, no, you just, you were just in middle school last year. And that's just a couple of years. You were just in middle school last year. No, I can't talk to you or message you. No, that's crazy. Like, like, no, I, but I don't understand why people don't even think that way. But people, people don't even see it that way. People just, they just trying to get in where they fit in. I think it's, I think it's wrong. I think it's disgusting. And, I don't understand why they do it or what they see out of it or what they get out of it because I couldn't even I couldn't even look at you or or even have a conversation with you that was on my level to, to let alone get into a, a intimate relationship with you. Oh no, man. But you saw it all the time though. And it still happened today. And it still happened. I see it every day. I hear about it. I read about it. You know what I'm saying? These these little girls, they got these boyfriends that's 20 and they 16. I know in the state of Georgia, the legal age for consent is 16. So legally, the 16 year old can have sex with a 20 year old, a 30 year old legally, but she can get consent to it. But that's crazy. And then plus, when you turn 17, she can do whatever she can have sex with or do whatever she wants to do with anybody. And can't nobody really say anything because technically she's an adult, but she's not an adult. Because technically she's 17. She can do whatever she want to do. She can leave the house. She she ain't got to listen to her parents. Um, she ain't got to listen to nobody. Because legally she's 17. She can get locked up in 
big girl jail, you know what I'm saying, in county, you know what I'm saying? But man, it's crazy, but it's crazy. But like like Cassidy said, I don't know why everybody acting like, oh yeah, R. Kelly this, R. Kelly this, when they were seeing it all the time, just like he said, in their neighborhood, on TV, in all the songs. Rick Jams got a song saying she was only 17 years old. And so I had to look it up when I heard the song. I was like, dog, I wonder how old he was when he um he released this song. He was in his 30s, his late 30s when he released that song. That she was that he was messing with the girl or wanted to mess with the girl, but she was only 17 years old. So man, I seen a video, um, LL Cool J was rapping about a little girl. You know what I'm saying? All of them did it. Just R. Kelly was the one that they threw the book at because he made it known and he was he was out in the world. He was he was flashing it too much. So they made an example out of him. But all these dudes be doing it. I don't think it's cool. And I I don't know. I, I done got I done got upset already about it. You know what I'm saying? But I done seen it. I done synced it, as as Vertizzi would say. And I never liked it. And I think it's crazy. Man, and Vert Teaser, man, what's, what's your take on it? Hey, you um like fishing? Yeah. So when you ask the purpose of it, you got some people who like yourself like fishing. You like taking the boat out. You like putting the worm or grasshopper, whatever the fuck you put on the little hook, throwing out there, sitting and patiently waiting to catch a fish. Which to catch one fish for those who actually fish may take what thirty minutes, an hour. Sometimes four hours just catch one fish that's actually, you know, that you keep. Now, you got some people who like to use these little things that they have that's almost like dynamite, where you just throw it in the water and like 20 fish, fish come. They're not fishing for sport, man. They, they fishing for substance. So, to answer your question, yeah, that's why they do it, bro. Like, like them older dudes that mess with them young women. They not talk. They not trying to, you know, do it for the sport. They just want to basically say, "Hey man, I'm just trying to get laid, and this is easy right here, and she's legal." When you got grown men who like, nah, man, I actually want to challenge. I actually want to talk to a woman. <laughs> to what Cassie was saying, me and MGH always talk about. It's crazy because a lot of the women is very upset. And a lot of these dudes that's talking to young women, where was you at when you were 16, 17? Because a lot of you had old older boyfriends. You probably did. I, I know. Because when I tried to talk to you, you would tell me you had a man. We 15, 16 years old. And your man 27. That's crazy. And I'm thinking, dang, bro, we 22. Your man 40. <laughs> like, let's, let's keep it real now. Even with Jay Z and Beyonce, Beyonce was eighteen when she started dating Jay. Jay was in his thirties. Wow. And eighteen is legal. I had no problem with that, but I, I do find it crazy that a lot of you be upset with R. Kelly, but it's a lot of your favorite entertainers that have huge age gap age gaps. Now this is what me and Rose differ on. If it, if you legal age, I don't give a fuck. It's not even my business, bro. I don't even care. If you are legal in that state, I don't even care if you date a man that's 70 years old, man. Like, that joint may be gross, creepy. I don't even care, bro. I don't, it, it shouldn't even be my business because it's legal. Yeah, it ain't my business, but and, it's still and, gross. And for those who have a problem with it, this is what I suggest you do, especially to the black people. Write a letter to your local congressman, your representative, and tell them to raise the legal age of consent from, because some of these states is 15, a lot of these states is 16, tell them to raise it to 18, 21, whatever age you think is appropriate for a young woman or a young man to consent to having sex with, especially with someone that's significantly older than them. But a lot of this fake outcry, we got to stop, stop with that. Because like me and MGH always talk about Man, some, some of it, in my opinion, I think just stem from the fact that it's a lot of you women that now that you're in your 30s and 40s, you having a hard time finding men your age to date. And you see the man that, that's successful that's your age or the ones that's doing okay, 
dating these girls that's 19, 20, 23 years old, and you trying to figure out, and you're like, oh, that's not fair, that's nasty, that's gross. And my only question to you is, when you was 19, 18, 17, 22, 23, dating a man that was 15 years older than you, 10 years older than you, what do you think the women that is your age now was thinking about you? They was thinking the same thing. I'm trying to find a man my age to be with, but the men my age, they constantly want to be with these young girls. So I want to put the I want to put the energy back where it belongs too. It's on you women. Because these these older men can't even date younger women unless you allow it. Because there's so many of you women that will say your preference is an older man. I can't tell you how many times I've actually had women tell me, oh, I don't like dating men my age. Men my age ain't mature. Or men my age, they can't really do nothing for me right now. Like, you got to be 7, 10, 12 years older than me for me to even want to talk or date you. <clears throat> and that's cool. That's your preference. But let's just make it very clear now. If you are choosing to date someone that's much older than you, we cannot then look at that person that's much older than you and say that they, 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 that something's wrong with them because you had a preference to date someone older and they had a preference to date someone younger for whatever reasons that they had to date someone that's younger than them. Because a lot of you just want to look at R. Kelly and just put emphasis on him. But it's a lot of men out here for decades that's been dating younger women and it hasn't been a problem. And you women have allowed it. Y'all are the ones who have said y'all have a preference. And I will, and I'm and I'm gonna end by saying this. I was talking to MGH, and now that I get older, and you know, I'm pretty sure other people around me can, you know, nod their heads and attest to it. But it's scary out here. Because I go out in public and women my age might holler at me, but then it's women that's in their early 20s and 19. That they come stepping to me mad crazy. And I'm like, do you know I'm, I'm 10 years older than you? I'm trying to talk to someone that's older than you. Like these young women, y'all mad aggressive when it comes to these older dudes. Like y'all don't want to date men y'all age. And, and that's a problem. It might stem from some of y'all need y'all daddies in y'all life. I don't know. But that, that's an issue right there, though. You got any uh, thoughts, Rose? No, nah, man, I ain't got no more thoughts on this topic, man. But, man, appreciate you. The, the wisdom that you brought to it, man. But that, I ain't got nothing on it, man. You got anything else to say on it? Man, closing arguments, man. To all you niggas that like getting your ass ate and your booty hole played with, I stand by what I said 10 minutes ago. In the words of Riley from Boondocks, nigga, you gay. I feel you. In the words of Airbnb Rakim, Peace. I'm back quiet.